connected to concern for the other people as much as we're connected to concern for the planet. And that it's being held down by this incredible and relentless propaganda system. If a decision is made by a centralized authority, it's going to represent the interests of a particular group in power. If power is actually rooted in large parts of the population, if people can actually participate in social planning, then they will presumably do so in terms of their own interests. Now that's why Madison, uh, for example, and Lippmann, and Bernays, and a whole host of others uh, have argued that uh, we cannot permit the population to participate because if they do, they will pursue their own interests, not the interests of the wealth of the nation. If you have centralized power, they'll use it for their own interests. You don't have to read that in a complicated textbook. It should be it's understandable by any 10-year-old child, and not by uh, uh, educated people, though they have it driven out of their heads, and various illusions replacing self-serving illusions. If the population are participants, they'll serve their own interests. Public opinion is very well studied, so we have a wealth of information about what the public wants. And there's a huge disconnect between public opinion and public policy. You know, the public and policymakers differ enormously on crucial issues. It's all very natural. It's not nothing surprising about it, and people understand it. So about 80% of the population in the United States uh, says that the government is run by a few big interests looking out for themselves. What do you mean by democracy? If you mean by democracy a system that accepts that the relative distribution of power and influence and wealth and income uh, in the society is sacrosanct. If the social system we call and know as capitalism is inviolable and you can't in fact erode or undercut the primacy of, of, of that class's power and property politically, then you've just ruled out democracy. The founders had a very clear idea that in order for political power to be democratic and to be equal, Economic power also had to be democratic and equal, okay? And that was the last thing they wanted. So they saw clearly that behind political democracy was economic democracy. Behind political equality was economic equality. And they did everything they could to block it. The claims of mind control are based on a belief that human beings are powerless or relatively powerless when they become the targets of psychological operations and propaganda. Media control, yeah, it has an impact on public opinion, without a doubt. It has an impact on the assumptions that people bring to trying to figure out what to do in their lives. It's powerful, but it's not the same as mind control. I think the best way to uh, stop propaganda is for people to understand what it is and how it works. Uh, I don't think we're going to stop propaganda so long as we have freedom of speech. And uh, frankly, I think that's a good thing for us. But there will always be people who exploit freedom of speech for their own ends. But Propaganda loses its effectiveness if people understand what is going on. A very important thing that can be done to reduce the power of propaganda is to f force the players to the surface so that where you have uh, campaigns, political campaigns, product campaigns, cultural campaigns that are organized by big uh, propaganda agencies, public relations agencies, then uh, part of the task for people who are observing this going on is to make this public, make it understood that what's appearing on the front page of, of the Washington Post, for example, really is a propaganda or a public relations campaign that's coming from a particular faction of society. We're paying for it and that they have names. 
it depends on uh, you know what people uh, believe, what people perceive, what people know. And for a democracy to really function and thrive, unlike Eddie Bernays, I would say what we need is more information, more freedom, more transparency, and more information about who's manipulating public opinion and, and the public mind. Eddie Bernays believed that fundamentally uh, people were unable to govern themselves in a democracy because most of us were just too dumb to figure it out. And so he used that to justify his practice that he exalted of managing and manipulating public opinion. I think actually what we need is a lot more exposure and education about how public opinion is managed and manipulated so that we have uh, a citizenry that can actually function and be critical thinkers and decision makers uh, and govern ourselves uh, in a democracy. Clearly, individual and public opinion is crucial to everything. As long as you can manage and manipulate public opinion, or as Bursa Marsteller likes to put it, public perception, you can control public behavior and, and policy. That's what Eddie Bernays knew. That's what he was saying when he talked about engineering consent. And so, yeah, I believe that uh, the ultimate battlefield really is in the mind. Watch out! Watch out! I ain't lying!